live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. Let's set the record straight really quickly. I did not agree with the decision for the Seahawks to throw the ball at the one-yard line at the end of Super Bowl 49. Didn't like it one bit. I would have taken my chances with Marshawn Lynch and would have gone from there. However, even though I don't agree with the call, considering the fact that Lynch's goal line stats weren't very good, the fact that putting your faith in the hands of Russell Wilson is usually a good idea, the fact that slant routes are usually pretty low risk, and the fact that the play failing relied on an undrafted rookie cornerback to make an insane play on the ball, I can at least defend the decision. Having said that, what the Seahawks did nine years prior at the Super Bowl? Yeah, I got nothing. Let's set the scene. February 5th, 2006. Super Bowl 40 between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Seattle Seahawks. If the Steelers win, it's their fifth title in franchise history, which ties the Cowboys and the 49ers for the most by one team ever, and it's their first title since the 1979 season. If the Seahawks win, it's their first title ever. This game is already the first time that the Seahawks have ever made it to the Super Bowl, and they're looking to bring back the Super Bowl for the first time in their 30-year history. Scoring column. Seattle gets on the board first when Matt Hasselbeck finds Daryl Jackson on a 16-yard to- Wait, they brought that back for pass interference? Really? Yeah, that seems like a questionable call, but regardless, the Seahawks are able to strike first when Josh Brown hits a 47-yard field goal near the end of the first quarter. After a drive lasting over six minutes, the Steelers get on the board when Ben Roethlisberger runs it in from a yard out. Pittsburgh leads the game 7-3, and there's two minutes left. That's a huge touchdown for Pittsburgh. Aside from the fact that it gives them the lead, the Steelers get the ball to start the second half. So if Seattle could find a way to retake the lead inside these final two minutes of the half, then that would be huge. Sure enough, it seems like Seattle has a shot at doing just that. Field, eight seconds left in the half. The Seahawks have a timeout. They're in a really good spot to get something going and maybe retake that lead. On second down, Sean Alexander gets the handoff. Wait, why are they running it? Eh, that seems like a weird call that nets you only four yards. Well, now you gotta hurry to the line and get a playoff. You gotta know the situation. You gotta have some urgency. You gotta... Wait, they're not calling a play. Why are they playing for the field goal? Why are they playing for the field goal? To get caught in this situation where you have to kick a field goal of this distance with seven seconds yeah. left and you're gonna leave a timeout up on the wall is stunning. It doesn't make any sense. The run doesn't make any sense. And then, you know, not running a, a you know, medium-sized tight pass in the middle. 54 yards for Josh Brown, and that kick a very weird sequence for the Seattle offense to end this first half. Welcome to Dumb Decisions. Before I break down what happened here, this whole series is about taking an in-depth look at decisions made that were clearly awful from the start. This isn't something that looked bad in hindsight. Rather, this is something that looked awful almost immediately. These are moves where your gut instinct tells you right away that there is no way this can possibly work. And sure enough, your gut instinct was smarter than that of an NFL head coach. And for this one, we're taking a look at the mind of Mike Holmgren. For the record, I absolutely think that Holmgren should be in the Hall of Fame. He was an instrumental part in some of the best offenses in the league during the late 80s and early 90s with the San Francisco 49ers. He made three Super Bowls as a head coach with multiple teams, and even won Super Bowl 31. The man's had three non-winning records in 17 seasons. He's got as many wins, as many titles, more Super Bowl appearances, and fewer seasons with a non-winning record than Bill Cowher. And if Cowher is in, then Holmgren deserves it. He absolutely belongs in the hall. I want to root for you, Mike, but decisions like this aren't helping your cause. So with that being said, let's take a look at why playing for the field goal at the end of the first half when down by four is a bad idea. Number one, this should go without saying, you're still going to be losing. I've seen coaches play conservatively when they just want to go into the half with the lead, or even tied up, even when they had ample opportunity to score and get something else going. As an example of that, look at Doug Marone at the end of the first half in the 2017 AFC Championship, which you can check out in the upper right corner. I get that. But when you're losing? When you're past midfield and have a chance to score a touchdown? You're not even going to take that chance? Especially when the Steelers are getting the ball to start the second half? Including the playoffs, in their last 19 games up until that point, the Seahawks were just 2-3 and three when they were trailing at the half, and were 13-1 and one when they were either tied at the half or leading. 
Despite winning 93% of their games when they weren't trailing at halftime, Holmgren decided not to take that chance, even though the alternative was a scenario where they lost more often than they won. And if that wasn't bad enough, Pittsburgh had won their last 10 games when they were tied or leading at the half. Pittsburgh knows how to play with the lead. For the most part, if they're leading it at halftime, they're not giving that back. We saw that in the AFC Championship against Denver, and we saw that in the divisional round against Indianapolis. Why would you willingly put yourself in a situation where you're not going to be leading at halftime? Maybe Holmgren was concerned that if the Seahawks turned it over or were stopped and were forced to punt, that Pittsburgh could get it back and score. But that is a horrible excuse for two reasons. Number one, you've got a great defense. Seattle's defense was seventh in the league in points allowed, and in five halves of postseason football up until that point, had allowed a grand total of 31 points, or just over six points per half. Again, that's really good. Do you not have faith in your defense that they'll be able to stop Pittsburgh if they decide to strike super late in the half? Another one? Also, you've literally got the top scoring offense in football. Trust Matt Hasselback and those guys to make a play like they've been doing all season. But number two, and more importantly, none of what I just said likely would have mattered. If Pittsburgh stopped you, unless they were getting the ball near midfield on a fumble or a pick at the line or something like that, Pittsburgh wasn't going to call anything. They would have been backed up inside their own 20-yard line after that punt with little time left, and would have been more than content to run the clock out and go into the halftime break with a four-point lead. Holmgren's biggest fear was something that shouldn't have even been considered. But hang on, because it gets worse. You see, this isn't the first time that the Seahawks did this. This isn't the first time that the Seahawks played somewhat conservatively at the end of the first half to allow for a Josh Brown field goal. The week before against Carolina in the NFC Championship, after being on Carolina's 40-yard line with 114 left in the half, the Seahawks killed time and had Josh Brown line up for a 49-yard field goal. He missed. In week 16 against the Colts, the first half ended with Josh Brown lining up for a 57-yard field goal. He missed. And a few weeks before that against the 49ers, the first half ended with Josh Brown lining up for a 50-yard field goal. Guess what? He missed! Literally the last three times in the last two months you have a half ending with a Josh Brown field goal attempt, he missed! And yet in the Super Bowl, instead of trusting your offense, you are more than comfortable relying on Josh Brown's left still be losing! You tried a strategy that has failed every single time in recent memory you used it, and yet you still decided to do it again. Unbelievable. And may I remind you, Josh Brown is terrible. Including the postseason, Brown hit just over 69% of his kicks that year. That's not a nice number. In fact, amongst all qualified kickers, it would have ranked second to last in the entire league. That same season, Jose Cortez was cut by three different teams, and it hits percentage on the season as a whole was higher than Brown's. Entering the Super Bowl, Brown had missed a kick in five of his last seven games. He hit just over 61% of his kicks prior to this field goal attempt at the end of the half. He had hit just 60% of his kicks from 40 plus yards. And yet despite all of those numbers going against him, this was what you decided to do? In the Super Bowl? Just, my god, it's even worse with the added context. This move was already stupid. But with these stats in place, it's just brain dead. Eventually, Pittsburgh went on to win the Super Bowl in fairly controversial fashion. I'm not going to get into the weeds of that, but while there were definitely some questionable decisions, Seattle did not help their own cause here. Maybe things would have been different if Holmgren wasn't coaching like a coward at the end of the first half. Who knows? But I do know this. Everything about the end of that half was a disaster. So what do we learn from all this? Playing scared when you got the top offense in football is a bad idea. Playing scared when you'll be losing if it works out is a bad idea. Playing scared when you're not good coming from behind and when the opposition is incredible with the lead is a bad idea. Putting no faith in your offense or your defense, but putting your faith in arguably the worst kicker in football is a bad idea. And coaching like a coward at the Super Bowl when that's not what got you there in the first place is a bad idea. Be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at jargator9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. 
Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping on the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See so how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.